Hey guys, Strong Style Studios here back again. It's Alex. And it's me, Noah. And we are here finally at long last with the end of the year awards. It took us a long time to get these done, and as you can see, it's just the, the two man team this year. Um, we didn't want to delay for you guys, you know, so uh, sorry about that. If you like the trio, It'll Maybe be, next year. They'll be back together, you know. Once the band's gonna get together. back together. Oh, but yeah. no but for right now, it's a uh, it's Team Wingman right now. Yeah. Is that a good name for it? I like it. All right, Team Wingman. All right. Uh, so right now we're gonna do our end of the year awards. This basically covers the same categories we covered last year. We threw in a few more this year just to to give something. Maybe we'll cut some from next year. Maybe we add some more. We never know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's start things off uh, with the best gimmick of the year. Um, for this, I chose Bray Wyatt. I mean, there's really. No other option. I mean, Bray Wyatt has just had a phenomenal gimmick um, since really starting in NXT. I've seen like parts of it, but this year he just he, they really built up this character well, and it started slow on television and didn't really do much. But like they've really done a great job of making this character just this real interesting, just psychopath almost, and just like a methodical individual. And I'm really just interested to see what they do with this character. I think. Uh, well, you know, for this, I put the same thing. I I agree totally with what you said. I have yet to see him have a bad promo. I have yet to see him break character, which a lot of guys have trouble with, you know, especially with gimmicks, mm -hmm. you know, something that is a legitimate gimmick. Yeah. Um, so I, I, this guy, he has just been head and shoulders above what I expected. Even though I saw some of the, his NXT stuff, mm -hmm. I think that coming into the WWE and just carrying all that momentum. He's done a fantastic exactly. job. And one thing I will say is like he is just like such a great guy in the ring of telling that story. Like he plays his character in the ring so well, mm -hmm. which is something I really appreciate from a, from a wrestler, especially when it's like so heavily involved with a gimmick and the right. gimmick that really defines him, you know. And so uh, I'm really happy that Bray Wyatt has found so much success with this with this character because I always thought he, even in Huggy Husky Harris, I'm like this guy's got potential, you know. Right. And what I love about him is he's a big guy. That can that tells a story, and most big guys that tell stories, it's boring and mm -hmm. slow. But he's, it's like that perfect me middle ground. Yeah, he's not too fast. He's not flying through a match. He's telling a story, but it's not boring. Yeah, he just, and I, I think he's top. Promo skills are great. I mean, oh, he's really got amazing. He has potential to be one of the best talkers in the WWE in the future. I think. Oh, we, I believe that. Yeah. But. All right. Next up, we got commentator of the year. Uh, this year, I chose Steve Carino. Um, Karina has really been on top of his game in ROH. I mean, he has been so funny. He has made um, a lot of bad matches just more entertaining just because of his commentary. And uh, just been hilarious on commentary. He's also very good. He's He's been a great example of a heel commentator done well where he doesn't bury the other the faces or, you know, just do stupid stuff. He's very much in character and it makes sense. And just it's always been enjoyable, I think, for this stuff. Um, I was... On the fence here, I almost put Carino. The only thing I had a problem with was that for the majority of the year, he wasn't actually commentating. I agree. Um, so if we went with the length of commentators, you know, I'm going with Taz. But I know I'm going to get crucified for this one, but hear me out because this was a year that commentary has been just terrible. Oh, yeah. WWE's commentary has been probably the worst I've seen it since Cole being. Super heel? Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Just terrible. Oh, just JBL terrible. has really kind of fallen in his face. Like, oh man, part. yeah. And doing the the chant, the ooh so yeah, you know, the yeah. for that, the, like the what's just up, awful. Oh, God. But Taz to me has been the bright light in some of TNA's worst matches. Their women's matches at some of the pay per views were just the only way that they were watchable was because of Taz being so funny. I think that he. As a heel, is just very comfortable. Okay. Sometimes he does get a, a little too overboard, buries people a little bit. But then again, I think he's he keeps things light enough. So I'm gonna have to go with Taz. Okay, fair enough. Uh, next up, we have a new one, which is the comeback of the year. Uh, do you want to get this one first? Uh, yeah, I can do this one. And this one was tough. I was on the fence here. I don't know if I should give my honorable mention. What um, let's let's take the honorable mention okay. for afterwards. Uh, but. For me, I went with Goldust. Um, Very he choice. came back this year, and this is the best I've ever seen him. Ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's doing moves that most I've never seen him do, and I've only seen small luchador yeah, style guys he did, do. He did a code red on Cesaro, yeah. which was great. Hitting the yeah, the Yoshi tonic on people. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, this is really the best I've seen him. And after we've learned about 
the struggles he had personally in TNA. Mm -hmm. He had some demons. To, to fight through all that, to come back to WWE, to be in the best shape of his life, be putting on matches that I want to see, mm -hmm. I think he really took it this year. I agree, and uh, that's a very good honorable mention for me. Uh, for me, I, though, I gotta go with Uha Nation. Um, I'm a big fan of Uha Nation. This guy, uh, last year at WrestleMania weekend, actually blew out his knee the first night of Triple Shot weekend. And basically, doctors told him, like, yeah, it doesn't look like he might ever wrestle again. And uh, he managed to come back and not only wrestle again, but had five tours in Japan with, for Dragon Gate, which is pretty impressive. And if, if you guys haven't seen Dragon Gate, it is breakneck speed wrestling. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it, it's no place for somebody with a bad knee. No. Um, and he did amazing there. He got big time over. He won a tag team title there, which, is, which uh, for a guy to go over there... It wasn't his first tour, but like still be kind of new to the Japan, and to win a title is very, very impressive. And uh, you know he had some great matches. In fact, one of his uh, tag team matches with BB Hulk is actually on my top, uh, like I think twenty matches of the year. It was a really, really good match, and he just really uh, excelled. And uh, you know it's a shame they didn't get as much buzz over here in the U.S., but he was over in Japan a lot, and he really enjoyed the time over there. But uh, looks like 2014 is going to be him over in the U.S. a lot more, including AAW, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah, I can't wait to see more of him. Over oh my here. god! Um, so Uha Nation gets it just because, like you know, he came back from a potentially career-ending injury and managed to have the best career, the best um, year of his life so far. Um, but yeah, Goldust, very honorable mention, as well as the other one you got on your list, which is. Uh, I went with uh, Tommaso Ciampa as another honorable yeah. mention. I thought he had. An amazing year after his really bad. He suffered a very bad ACL injury, I believe. It was, it was torn ACL. Yeah, yeah to, tore his ACL. Uh, finished that match, by the way. Fair, and, and actually, amazing. that was probably the best match of his career at up to that point. Up to that point. That's the thing that was the why I, I almost put him on here is because he was a guy before his injury. He was enjoyable, but he was definitely mid card, lower mid card. Mm -hmm. He didn't stand out, but he gets hurt and he comes back. And is just just blows up. And the thing is, he was over as soon as his music hit. Like, oh yeah. It wasn't even like a match that got him over. It was just him being there, this aura around mm -hmm. him. And that's not to take anything away from his matches because they have been far oh, better yeah. than his matches. Especially before. over in um, Peter G, he's really done amazing jobs there. His match with Elgin was probably one of the best matches of R of ROH this year. His match with Adam Cole was just as good as in ROH as his, yeah. his, his match. Just with he's Adam Cole. been on his A game this year, and uh, uh, I would not be surprised if next year he succeeds in becoming like the biggest breakout star that year. Mm -hmm. I would not be surprised to see more title belts around his waist. Oh, no kidding! Year. You know, uh, no, I would. I'd love to see him as the TV champ in ROH. I thought that was a great. Decision that was a great also. decision. We 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 push for that. I think, or we we. We wanted that. We didn't. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, we, yeah. we had some, we push. Had some pull. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pulled a few strings, you know, <laughs> called them some favors, you know. Alright, now next up, uh, breakout star of, of 2013. Uh, for this one, I chose Shibata uh, from New Japan fame. Um, for me, really, this is because Shibata was a guy I, I had never really heard of this guy before. Uh, although, apparently, he had wrestled in, back in the past few years, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, um, you he was, know. He was. I feel like he, in the past years he was smaller. Yeah. Build and um, but he comes back from MMA and decides to start wrestling again. And he had a pretty good start um, at 2012, but then in 2013 he just explodes in like just amazing match qualities, especially during the G1. I mean, he really brought some amazing matches in the G1. Um, his match with Ishii was a five star match of the year. Um, his feud with Goto was amazing, some of the most brutal matches ever seen. I mean, these guys were literally out there beating the shit out of each other. And uh, for me, Shibata just really, in my opinion, this year, really just broke out and showed the world that, yeah, I may be an MMA guy past, but I'm a wrestler now, and like, this is why. And he proved that I'm deserving of being not, uh, considered a wrestler and a top guy in New Japan, and uh, I'm coming for that belt, you know. May never get a title shot just because of politics, because um, apparently Tanahashi and Nakamura don't really like him, but Hey, you know, he, he proved to the fans that he's a wrestler and he can go, and he's right. definitely uh, popular over there. Yeah, and you know, personally, I would have picked, I think I would have picked him also. Yeah. But I just w didn't watch enough New Japan this past That's year. That's fair. So I didn't want to go there, and I, I should have saved my 
honorable mention for this because I'm going to go with Tommaso Ciampa. I thought that this year he, like I said just a few minutes ago, just he came back and he blew up and he had great matches. He stood out on cards. And my honorable mention was Bray Wyatt because obvious reasons. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I agree. Uh, next up is our wrestler to watch for next year. We decided to put this one out there just is basically this is the wrestler we want to see more of and this is the wrestler we think you guys should be paying attention to and like you know keep an eye on this guy because this guy's going to be good and mine is Shane Hollister. Uh, I started watching AEW and I heard a lot about it and I heard a lot of buzz but this one guy Shane Hollister and like I heard a lot I heard his name mentioned how he had a great feud with Sammy Callahan and he was the champion and I'm like okay I'm going to start watching and immediately this guy caught my eye and I'm like this is a guy who's got the potential. He had some great matches with Jimmy Jacobs, uh, Michael Elgin. His match, his last man standing match with Sammy Callahan was one of the best last man standing matches I've ever seen. It was amazing. And this guy is just so underrated and so deserving of getting more chances. Apparently, he's been booked for CCW a couple times. And it's like, why is no one else booking this guy? Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy that like he's really trying to push to get, for Peter, to, get to Peter G right now. And uh, Seth Rollins of The Shield from WWE has put on Twitter, like, I want to see Shane Hauser in, in POG. So that's a big rub from a major star, which I think is going to help him get there a lot faster. And I'd really like to see that because I, I love Shane Hauser. I think he's an amazing talent. I, I, I want to agree and say that uh, I that's the guy I picked too because he's phenomenal. I just haven't seen enough of him this year. I hope I'm not picking someone that people already know too well, but I'm going to go with ACH. I think hopefully in the next year he's going to break out more as a singles guy. Um, he's he's in a tag team currently, and this is just a guy that goes out and has amazing matches. He's he's having blow away matches in the mid card. Yeah. Like he's having some, sometimes the best match of the night in the mid card. Yeah. And this is a guy that I think that we will see just explode in the next year. But if I want to put my stock in somebody I want to see, it's definitely going to be Hollister. Okay. This is a guy that, it blows, like you said, it blows my mind that no one's picked him up. And he's not a fly-in. He's a Midwest guy. Yeah. How much could this guy cost? Yeah. Really. I mean, and this is a guy that people have been asking for, at least in, like, Ring of Honor, for yeah. years. I you know. know. And now he's, he's at, at looking his best. I just hope that we see more places capitalize on him, mm -hmm. especially like PWG. Oh, yeah, I hope so. He'd be great there. Um, also, I want to say about, I think, about ACH, I think he was your Rookie of the Year last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, that's pretty impressive to rise through the ranks that fast. Yeah. All right, next up, we have the most overrated. And uh, for the second year in a row, I think, I picked Ryback. Because, once again, this guy proved to be an overrated piece of shit. Uh, I can't sure go this at all. This is a guy who was put in a world title main event feud after WrestleMania and did jack shit with it. Then proceeded to have a mediocre mid mid card run. Uh, had a was given the chance to work with Paul Heyman, the genius Paul Heyman, in a feud with CM Punk, and did That's nothing cool. I mean, with it. I mean, how? What better opportunity can you get? If you would ask. Any person on the indies or up and comers in NXT, like, hey, would you like to work with Paul Heyman and CM Punk on a main event program on Raw? They would be busting their ass, like, yeah, I want that. Yeah. And Ryback was given it and didn't do shit with it. And it didn't improve, didn't improve his mic skills, didn't improve his ring skills at all, didn't get any safer. He's still a dangerous wrestler. Right. He hurt people along the way. Yeah, he gave Dolph Ziggler a concussion recently. Se and very serious. Very serious concussion. And just like, this guy is dangerous. He doesn't belong on the main roster. Ship him back to NXT. Or better yet, send him home. Because he, I'm done with Ryback, Andy. I cannot stand the guy. It, it, and also, he comes off very ungrateful in interviews. If you ever hear an interview with this guy, he sounds like he does, he's like, the, you know, like hot shit and he deserves everything. And he doesn't. And that's a great choice. I, uh, I, it's hard to say that that's not a perfect choice. But for me, I'm going to go with Randy Orton here. Okay. Um, in 2013, for them to be shoving a guy like Randy Orton down our throats. Again. Uh, exactly. Again. Telling us he's the face of the company. I, I, we've all been sitting here watching for the past few years, watching him be completely lazy, do next to nothing in the ring, yeah. and have mediocre <coughs> Yeah. Then this year, he gets the belt. Mm-hmm. Handed to him basically at yeah. SummerSlam, so we didn't get to see a good match. Then we see three, four months of just 
just terrible booking with him. He was in the main event. The only reason people cared was because Daniel Bryan was the one facing him. Mm-hmm. He main events Survivor Series in what was, I don't want to get too far into it, but just an absolute... It's the biggest middle finger to wrestling fans I've seen this horrible. year. Horrible. One, well, one of the biggest, not the biggest, but a huge middle finger. Yes. Just a terrible, terrible match. Filled with botches. Yeah. And it's just hard for me. And then he TLC, he goes in and he gets the unified champion now. Yeah. He's the undisputed champion. And in what way does he deserve it? You see all these promos on TV about how he doesn't deserve it and he's been given everything. Well, it's, it's like you say it and then you prove it. John Cena hit the nail on the hammer on that uh, the, the promo before TLC, I think it was. Ray basically said, like, Randy Aaron, you were given everything in your career and then you got lazy. It's like... That's it. That's that's exactly the point. Like, right. Orton so was why does he still have the belt? Yeah. And, uh, yeah he's it, still lazy. He's still lazy. Of course he is. And he still throws fits when the crowd boos or... Oh, yeah. You can, you can tell, like, just you know, by the way he acts in the ring. Like, when something doesn't go his way, or he doesn't get the crowd to do what, they, what he wants them to do, he doesn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. He's clueless. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, most underrated. Would you like to start this one off? Sure. I, I you know, I... I should have looked back at my notes from last year, but I feel like I might have picked this guy last year. But I'm going to go with Willie Mack. I think you did. This guy is like just, he's such an amazing athlete, especially for a big guy. And his look, you know, he's, he's a black guy, he's heavy set. This is a guy that is so counter uh, mainstream that he's, it seems like he'd just be so perfectly marketable for the indie crowd. Yeah. It just blows my mind that he's still. He, the curtain jerker in PWG. In my opinion, like you can make him like the, the indie version of Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, or the indie version of Samoa Joe again. You yeah, know? he's he's got this look. He's he's it's just so athletic for his size. It oh just blows God. people's minds. Yeah, and his matches are always he usually the highlight of his matches too. Oh yeah, he, he that crowd is like a hundred percent behind him in PWG. It's, it's very strange. It is bizarre. Him. Apparently, Super Dragon doesn't like him or something like that, which is too bad. shocking to me. Um, for my well, William Mack, a very underrated and like William Mack, in my opinion, will always be underrated until he's like in every single company in the Indies. Uh, but for my most underrated this year, I chose uh, Ishii from uh, New Japan. Again, another New Japan guy. But uh, this guy, um, there was a match earlier this year in February where he took on Masato Tanaka, which was a great match, really hard hitting, and then. I, I really didn't notice this guy, and then the G1 came around, and then suddenly this one guy who I've never heard of, like, is having the best matches on the cards. And like, and I kept I kept calling him like, hey, who is this Ishii guy? It's like, oh, he's just you know he's a guy who doesn't really use. Like, like why not? Like, why is this guy not on the show more? And then there's the famous match with him and Shibata, where these two guys just went out there and had the best fight I've ever seen in wrestling. They really just amazing. beat the hell out of each other. And he had matches with Tanahashi and with Okada and just uh, these amazing matches. And then after the G1 is over, just kind of disappears again into, into the um, undercard of the New Japan shows. And just like, why is this guy not the guy you're building up as like a challenger for Okada or the challenger for the Intercontinental title? Like, why is this guy not being used more? Mm-hmm. And it's really been disappointing to me. Um, looks like maybe this year we'll see him getting pushed more because he's on the next um, card for like the against Naito, so maybe we'll see some more of him, but I really, really hope so. But for this year, Ishii, most underrated. I do have a couple of honorable mentions. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go with Shane Hollister. Yeah, For I all agree. the reasons you've mentioned, just nobody, it's almost like nobody, half of the people on the internet haven't heard of him. Oh, yeah. I, I, you I, know, I, and it's sad because he's so talented. Oh, my God, I know. He's amazing. And I also had another, and that was Silas Young. And I yeah, thought he had just an awesome year. He looks, he's in the best shape of his life. He's having great storytelling he's matches. He's a great old school heel. Yeah, and he brings like, you really just, you like him, but you hate him. Yeah, he's, you know? he is a perfect example of an asshole heel in wrestling. Just He's great. And he, it's perfect. If you get him in there with a face, there's tension. You, know? yeah, you can feel the tension. There's a great match with him and Tommaso Ciampa had at a night of reclamation, night two. Um, where we were there live in Dearborn, mm-hmm. it was a great match, and just like it was like an under, it was like the third match in the show, and like they had like one of the best matches of the night. Yeah. Um, also, I want to throw in there uh, Ethan Page and Josh Alexander, uh, Monster Mafia. Uh, there are a couple guys that have been working like AEW and AI and AIW, 
And uh, they worked a few matches in Ring of Honor, but they're two team that I would like to see more of because they are very good. Just two really big guys, but again, agile dudes. And Ethan Page especially is a very, very talented dude and uh, just deserves more bookings, you know. I, I know Ring of Honor has been, like, interested in him for a little while, I think. Well, that's good so. to hear. All right, uh, next up we have The Most Improved. Uh, do you want to set this one off? Or? Yeah, I can take this one. For me, this uh, has to be Kyle O'Reilly. I feel like last year he, well, ever since he came in, he's been fantastically athletic. Yeah. And he's fun to watch. The only thing is I felt like he had all the pieces, they just weren't in place. And this year, he put them all in place. Absolutely. He's having great athletic, fast-paced matches with phenomenal storytelling. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's really not much you can ask for him. He's he's in a great tag team with Bobby Fish. Probably one of the most, I would say, a very almost underrated tag team. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. And he's in the main event scene at PWG. And this guy is just really really figured it out yeah. over this course of the year. Um, I, I th people have been saying that he's the next Brian Danielson of the Indies, and I can, I can see that. I can see that. And he's even gotten more personality in the ring. Yeah, I agree. That's one thing. It's, and uh, I actually I put Kyle Riley as well because, uh, like I you said, like he had all these pieces. My thing was, like he knows the plays, he just doesn't know how to put them together. You know, mm -hmm. He just didn't know the book. And uh, he has just improved so much. I mean, you look at his line of work in POG, I mean, I think it was like at, um, it started at, all Star Weekend Night Two, where he's matched with Sammy Callahan, and just like we watched the match, and it's like, okay, where has Kyle Riley been? And then like he just kept going, and like it was just like, he, it was unbelievable. There's the string of matches he had that were just the match of the night or or close to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, his work in ROH has been great this year with Bobby Fish, and just he's really really impressed me this this year. And uh, yeah, he's grown into uh, a big time future main eventer in the Indies. Uh, next up, we have the Female Wrestler of the Year. Um, really not much competition besides maybe Gail Kim, but uh, I would say AJ Lee because in WWE she's been like the only ray of sunshine in that Divas division that is just atrocious. She's the only one that can really cut a promo that actually is not one to rip your ears off. She's the only one that looks like any anywhere near comfortable in the ring these days. And just, you know, she is miles ahead of most of the Divas on the main roster. I have to agree. I mean, like you said, She's the only one on the mic that anybody can stand listening yeah. to. When she's in the ring, at least it looks like a wrestling match, you yeah. know. Um, but I, I wanted to give it to somebody else, but they just weren't around long yeah. enough. Which is Tara Terrell. Tara Terrell. I agree. She had one of TNA's best matches of the year, if not two of them. Yeah, uh, the, the last match, the last night got standing, and the ladder match. Arguably the best. One of those matches is arguably the best match of TNA's year. I thought yeah. it was on par with anything that they put out. Awesome, awesome stuff. I just wish we saw more of her. Yeah, that's it. It's a shame. Um, and before we move on, that's a girl that'll take a bump. Oh, God, yeah, man. Like, watch that last night on Saturday match with her and Gail Kim. They, those two girls busted their ass. Mm -hmm. They had the best match of the night, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay, next up we have the worst television show. Um, no question, TNA Impact. Yeah. I mean, wow. there there is no competition. TNA Impact was so one to make me one to make me kill myself. It was that bad. <laughs> it, it was, was bad. horrible. The, the thing about it is, like, I don't normally. I'm not one to sit down and tune into TNA, especially after all the things that's happened over oh, the years and this year. But if I'm flipping through the channels and I see on uh, TNA there might be a a couple of guys in the ring that I like. Okay, I'll stick around for the end of this match. That is. Constantly been a mistake. Oh, yeah. every time I sit through a, a match that I hope to be good, it is just embarrassing. It's yeah. the ending is usually booked just so poorly. That's been Tina's biggest problem this year. It's just like every single match it seemed to like had like some kind of fucked up finish that just like that just ruined the match for me. Right. And it's not just like one match a night. It's it's every, every match. match. Oh. I mean, this is WCW booking. This oh, is it's WCW two thousand. Yeah, this is they're they're going down fast. Uh, best TV show, which uh, actually, coincidentally, we, I think we reversed it because last year TNA was the best and yeah. this year Raw is the best. Yeah. And we are so happy because uh, Raw this year, man, they kicked some ass this year. Uh, I think there was a string of like where almost every week there's been like a very, very good match on Raw since like probably after Mania, I think, like 
Yeah. It I seems mean, like the, I felt like their streak really kind of started the night after Mania. I that think was so. the best Raw after Mania I've seen. Yeah, I love that. And it just yeah. it carried through most I of the year. There was a couple. Of, there were so many good matches. I mean, like, um, well, actually, there's one before Mania, which was CM Punk, John Cena, which yeah. was amazing. Um, we got so many Shield matches. I mean, the Shield this year were the MVPs of Raw. There's mm -hmm. no question. They had so many great matches. Um, Daniel Bryan in the gauntlet match was amazing with Cesaro and Jack Swagger and Ryback. Um, a lot of six-man tag with six, the Usos. A lot of six-man tag with the Usos really broke out this year. And the thing is, Just, with six-man tags, usually when it's WWE, they're terribly yeah, great. They, but they've changed up the formula with these t six-man tags. Yep. It really is a great way to send the show off. Oh, it's great awesome. Great main events. Yep, they've been having some great matches on Raw. And Raw, Raw has just been... A lot more fun recently, you know. Mm -hmm. Not so much uh, last couple months, but just like that string of like from like Mania till SummerSlam was just so much fun with Raw. You, you, it's there's no other better type TV out there. I think. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the ones. what was the pay per view just after SummerSlam? Was it Night Champions? Okay, so I, I and I felt the Raw after Night of Champions and the Raw after the the or the next few yeah, yeah. pay per views were actually better than the paper. I agree, yeah, there's, um, there's a string of those. Yeah, so they were putting on some pretty good, I mean, the pay, some of the pay-per-views through that stretch were just god-awful, yeah. but the Raw is following. The Raw that's definitely. the best you can get yeah. for free television. I agree. Free wrestling. All right, uh, best talker. Um, didn't really pick, didn't pick a non-wrestling guy that, this year. Uh, instead, I picked Paul Heyman. Um, Paul Heyman, I mean, I mean from, from his stuff with Lesnar, with the Triple H feud, to his stuff with CM Punk, to with even Curtis Axel or Ryback, just, Paul Heyman is a microphone genius. Mm -hmm. When he speaks, he is just so convincing. You believe every single word this guy is saying. He is just so amazing. And so many great promos this year. One of my favorites was, I think it was earlier this year, like where it was the Shield thing. And he was talking to Mr. Man like, Mr. McMahon, I have lied my entire life, but I am not lying here. That was amazing. It was a great promo. It was the best thing about that promo was when he said, when he was talking about being a promoter. Yeah. And how you have to lie. Yeah. And you could see that little smirk on Vince's face like, yeah, I know exactly what he's saying. And that's why it was such a brilliant promo. Oh, because man. it was true. Yeah. I love when Paul Heyman just mixes in those little grains of truth and just makes, oh my God, he's amazing. Uh, I, I'm, it is going to be a sad, sad day in, in the world of wrestling when Paul Heyman finally walks away from wrestling for good yeah. or passes away. Just It's going to be a tragedy. Paul Heyman will never be replaced. No, he is a living legend, and I also went with Paul Heyman. Yeah. I think that there really wasn't anybody close, and the only person that I could put close would probably be, would be uh, excuse me, CM Punk, but that's because they were in the same field. Yeah, Punk was good. Um, I, Kevin Steen was great too. I mean, Kevin Steen's always, always good. awesome. Wyatt again. Bray Wyatt was really good. Um, even Danielson or Brian Danielson. Oh my God. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, man, I'm 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 messing up today. My head's all right. That's his. Yeah, it, it's still it, his name it, to it's, me. It's his true name. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Daniel Bryan had some really great promos this year and really kind of stepped up to the plate of being a more charismatic guy. But uh, yeah, Heyman just miles above everyone. I'm sorry. Uh, next, that leads right into the promo of the year. We actually have a lot of honorable mentions for this yeah, one, but uh, this one's tough. I'm gonna say for right now, my favorite promo this year was almost any interaction between CM Punk and Paul Heyman. But the one I loved the most, I think, it was the night after Money in the Bank, was when Paul CM Punk called out Heyman and like confronted him about betraying him, and like the back and forth they had was just amazing. Where CM Punk basically said like, "Paul, I don't care who I have to go through. I will go through every single person." I'm going to get my hands on you. And then Paul Heyman calling out Brock Lesnar. That whole promo was just amazing. Yeah. And as soon as that promo was over, I'm like, this, like, I was like, I'm ready for Lesnar Punk. Like, that was like the biggest build-up ever, I thought. That was incredible. It, it was an amazing promo. And we're talking about the two best guys in the business today at talking people into the into the building. Oh, Paul Heyman, CM. I would not be surprised. They probably they could have sold that building out right then and there. Yeah, that match could have been a turd, but they would have been a full stadium. They yeah, they sold it though. And yeah, I mean that was a phenomenal promo. That was a tough one for me to, to overlook, but I went with a different one. And I actually went with one from Daniel Bryan, the guy that can't cut a promo. Yeah, according to everyone on the internet. <laughs> and I went with his 
your not a wrestler promo that he cut on John Cena a week before SummerSlam. Oh, I thought this was incredible. Uh, the sequence where he talked about how in Japan, before a big match, you slap your opponent as hard as you can to see how tough they are, and it's kind of to build that fire, like get everyone. Yeah, and it's a little bit of a respect thing. Like, are, are you a man? And when Brian turned to Cena and says, "But uh, you don't deserve it because you're not a wrestler," I I marked so hard I couldn't believe it. That was the most amazing yeah. thing. From an indie fan standpoint, to, for your indie hero to say that to the guy that is it's supposed to be the... The golden boy. Yeah. The golden boy of wrestling. You know, I'm not trying to be a Cena hater, but this is one of those moments of like, that was special. Yeah. That was a very big moment in wrestling. And Whether people realize it or not, that was amazing. But not only, not only that, but like the whole thing like where Daniel Bryan is like, you're a parody of, re of a wrestler. And, uh, you know, and even John Cena there. And the shirt, when he's talking yeah. about the shirt. Yeah. My shirt is a parody of your shirt because you are a parody of wrestling. Yeah, and, he, and, and let's be fair, John Cena in that promo had a pretty good promo too against Brian. He did. Yeah. But I thought that it was just yeah. That was television done so so well. Yeah, and that was a, that was a great promo. And uh, let's um, some more mentions the Mark Henry retirement speech. That's true. oh that my was, god, that was, that one's hard. That that was that genius. Was oh man, like that that I actually I was totally believed like. Man, Mark Henry's retirement, this sucks. And then like all of a sudden, like that whole like, baby, I'm coming home, and like just everything's like, oh Mark, I'm gonna miss you. And then he goes, hugs you, and then just like, like, oh my god, I love you, Mark. And you're just, talking Oh my god, that was amazing. I might be one of the most skeptical wrestling fans yeah. in the world. Like, even when he came out and started, I'm like, this is this is I don't know, but yeah. this seems like bullshit. Yeah. And then he started like tearing up. I was like, He's leaving, and then and then like you know he's like gone, like him like seeing him coming in the ring, holding the belt with him, and you know talking about like all this and that, and just like it's like oh my god, he's like actually retiring, and just like yeah, he's he suckered Beautiful. everyone in. That was just brilliant. Oh my god, that was that was amazing. That was like that was probably the highlight of Mark Henry's career right there, cutting that promo. Right, and the thing is about Mark Henry after that, and you know because of his in ring work, yeah, I. Respect him and don't mind him being in pretty much any storyline. Oh, Whereas yeah. a couple of years ago, I changed the channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We became Mark Henry fans. All right. Uh, worst feud of the year. Uh, there's actually quite a few of these, I thought, uh, especially from some from TNA. But the one we have to give is the honor to is the Big Show and the Authority. And we agree on this one. I just want yeah. to state that right uh, now. This was a piece of shit feud. I mean, it was built up. It was completely random, almost. It felt completely random. Like, why is why is the Big Show the target of the Authority? And it was just insulting because you know you had this shit every fucking week of the Big Show crying in the middle of the ring and knocking some guy out and blah. And they dragged this fucking shit out and just it was embarrassing. And it took away from the Daniel Bryan storyline, which should have been the main focus of the Raw. And it just it, it was a piece of shit. From start to finish. There were so, so many things wrong with this feud. I want to take you back to 2012. Okay. Uh, that was the year when Big Show got a new contract. Yeah. Kayfabe, new contract. Ironclad, yeah. by the way. Uh, one year later, he has no money and is getting fired every other week. Yeah. Now, how does that make any freaking sense? Let me see right now. Also, I hate whenever they say, like, oh... You're a wrestler and you're broke. It's like, you work for the WWE, you ain't gonna be broke. There is nobody that works for the WWE that's broke. I mean, unless they're dealing with some shady shit yeah. right here. Yeah, like, I mean, come on. Okay. But this thing, and the, the the thing was, like you said, it took away from Brian's push. Yeah. And it was being pushed while Brian was being pushed. Like, And it was so sad to see what it took to get Big Show over. Yeah. Because... What it took was basically trying to take Brian's yes chant. Yeah. You know, that, it, there was nothing that set this apart from the the authority Brian feud. Basically, it was a leech off that. Mm -hmm. But then, it's the payoff for the Brian feud. Yep. How do you explain that? I don't understand that. Was this so was easily the worst. And every week, it just compounded yeah, it, it just kept getting more. It was like a recurring nightmare oh, of just every week just having to deal with this shit. 
and Big Show crying. I don't need to see the see the Big Show cry in the fucking ring again. No, I get it. Like he, I, you know, it's like, oh, he's a really good actor. It's like I don't give a shit if he's a good actor. I want to see him fucking wrestle. How is that good acting? Yeah. How in what way is that's not good acting? No. Do you remember the 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 night he cried? Then got angry and then oh changed. The, that's not the, the, good the, acting. The, the fucking Big Show <laughs> face. Yes. yes. God. No. Oh no. my God. Okay. Let's switch, let's go from the worst to the best. The best feud of the year has got to be Tanahashi and Okada from New Japan. I mean, these guys had easily the best series of matches I've ever seen in professional wrestling, aside from Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat. I mean, these guys went out there, and t I, I don't speak a lick of Japan Japanese. I don't speak Japan. A lick of Japan. <laughs> yeah. I don't speak a, any Japanese, and yet I could tell in the ring that these guys were telling a great story, mm -hmm. just from the wrestling. And that's how wrestling should be. The story should be told in the ring. It, wrestling should, it should be universal. Be, exactly. It shouldn't need commentary. Commentary is nice, but if a match needs it, you're not doing it right. Yep. And... I, I have to agree. There's really nothing that even compares. I know. The closest would, to me, would have been Shibata, Goto, if Goto that would, never got hurt. That was one, that was mine for a long time. Yeah, if the if the final match wouldn't have been at Wrestle Kingdom, would have been last year, that might have been I think on so. the level. I think might so. have been the one. But also Brian, nothing in North America touches these. Um, Brian and Orton had the capacity to be, but they fucked that up royally. Big time. Um, Lesnar and Punk could have been, but it was too short. And then the Heyman, the Heyman feud with Punk, when Lesnar left, was just terrible because Axel and Ryback can't fucking wrestle. But yeah, this was there was nothing close to Okada and Tanahashi. This was basically, um, you know, basically the the ace of the of the company putting over the young star. Right, and and now you could look at Okada and you see. <sighs> the face of the company. He It wasn't like in WWE where John Cena's like, oh, you can have the belt for a couple months. I'll go do something else. I'll have a feud. No, it's it's Okada's company now. Exactly. It's, his, it's his belt. It's his company. Yep. And you believe it. Yeah, you believe, yeah. him. Okada, ba Tanahashi basically you know, gave the belt to Okada and said, you, it's yours. Mm -hmm. Take over. And uh, I think Okada's done a wonderful job as champion, too. All right, uh, the worst show of the year. Oh, there are so many to choose from. There was some shit. There was. A lot from WWE and a lot from TNA. Um, but for me, it has to be WWE Battlegrounds, where basically they, in their infinite wisdom, decided to put together a shitty, shitty booked card, first and foremost, and then have written down, basically, that the main event of the show for the vacant WWE Championship between Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton was going to have no finish. You were asking customers to pay $50 for a pay-per-view that had no finish. That is fucking bullshit. That's unacceptable because pay-per-views are what you, you're paying for the finish. The reason you buy a pay-per-view is because you didn't get the, the finish on free television. Exactly. That's the whole ploy of pay-per-view. Why am I going to pay if I'm watching another episode of Raw? Exactly. Everything that was Oh, and by the way, I picked the same. I yeah, I, oh god, it was fucking horrible. Horrifying. The only um, good match on that whole show was the uh, the Rhodes family taking out the Shield. And I believe that was the opener. No, it was it was like middle of the middle. really okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of something else. No, I think Del Rio and RVD opened. Okay, no, I think. Yeah, you're right. Whatever. But uh, yeah, that was good. But wasn't that? Oddly booked. I feel like that was one of those. It was. It was, was. it was really good, but like I don't know, a lot of people liked it more than us. I mean, okay. But in, anyway, yeah, this pay per view was just terrible. I mean, this. this I, well, let's not forget Ryback and CM Punk in a horrendous match that That's, ended I, with I, CM Punk low blowing, low blowing Ryback for a roll up finish. God, it was so stupid. The, that battleground is an example of why WWE. It is kind of like a greedy company. I mean, that was like quintessential. Like, this is trying to get money from people. Mm -hmm. And it was like the lowest, it was the second lowest buy rate of a pay per view ever. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. And they had the audacity to blame Daniel Bryan for not having enough star power. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, eat shit. Get, hire some better writers, you cheap sons of bitches. Okay. Uh, hire a writer that watches wrestling. Yeah, how about that? Send some, send some shitty sitcom writer. No kidding. Let's go again to the best, which is the best show of the. 
this year, and ironically, it was the very first show we watched this year. Yes, it was. Wrestle Kingdom 7 from New Japan. Oh my god, was this show amazing. This might be one of the best wrestling shows I've ever seen. If this was on DVD and I could find it somewhere in the U.S., I would buy this in a heartbeat. This is an amazing show from start to finish. Um, let's, let's start with the fact that they have the, one of the best triple threat matches I've ever seen. Loki, Prince Devitt, and Kota Ibushi for the junior title was amazing. Um, Nakamura versus Sakuraba and probably one of the best mixtures of MMA and wrestling I've ever seen. Oh, amazing. And Tanahashi Okada in a fucking classic. And just so many other great matches on this card. And, and it's not just great matches. This, from the, every aspect of this felt like a big show. Yeah. A huge show. You, the, 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 they showed the arena and it's just packed full of people. And during the main event, Okada comes out and his entrance is just Awesome. You 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 were you would thought that like Ric Flair back from the eighties had just walked out that's, of the ring. It, that's how it's the little things that make a show yeah. feel important. The video packages, the the entrances, like they had like live music performance and stuff. Yes. That were good. The lighting, just everything. Like New Japan has like maybe has copied WrestleMania for like how to do big grand entrances, but they have perfected the little yeah. detail and yeah. gotten it down to a T. Where everything on that show. Just felt like this is a big deal, and you know you're doing something right when you are putting out video packages, and American fans are stoked by them. Yeah. Because I don't speak a lick of Japanese either, so I can watch a video package, and am super hyped for the match. Yeah. That's God. That's just new fan is so fucking good at. It. If they, if they ever figure, if they ever get English commentary on their stuff. They're, they're taking over everything. Oh, man. There, there'd be no question. All right. Uh, the worst match of the year. The best match of the year will, of course, be saved for an individual video, but we want to give honors to the worst. And uh, guess who it is again? It's the Big Show and Randy Orton from Survivor Series this year. Oh, my God. With the, again, this match was a middle finger to every wrestling fan in the world. The thing is, if this was on Battleground or... Night of Champions, or then it wouldn't have been such a significant yeah eat shit from them yeah. But to be on your number four biggest show of the year, your worst the main event, yeah, that is an insult. Yeah, huge insult. This was this was an eleven minute main event. This was the second shortest match of the night. And we're talking about a main event that consisted with outdoor. They went outside the ring. Yep. To waste time. You're telling me you can't fill 11 minutes within the confines of the ropes. Yep. You have to go waste time on the outside, which always means no bump. Yep. They had to go over the guardrail to do it, which means no bump. motherfucking bump. Oh, 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 referee bump. Plus, this was like the most botched match. I, oh my god, it was horrible. I, I can remember that the one spot in this match that would have been memorable and cool to see, which was the DDT off the top rope. Yep. Botched. Orton dropped him. Or, or Big Show fucked up and dropped off the ropes. And Orton just DJed like, Oh, I did it on purpose. I did it on purpose. Like, no, you're a fucking idiot. You <laughs> fucked up. Worst match of the year. Terrible. Okay. Stable of the year. This was a good one. Uh, for the second year in a row, though, the Shield retained this because they are fucking amazing. From beginning of the year to the end of the year, they have been the MVPs of the WWE. They have kicked ass and took names. And... In my opinion, uh, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins are like the three biggest rising stars in WWE. And in three years, I would not be shocked to see one of them guys main eventing WrestleMania. And I laugh at every single one of you that kept saying, they're going to fuck this up, they're going to fuck this up. It's been a year, they haven't fucked it up yet. I'm going to go with The Shield also. They, I, I can't remember a match that they've had that I didn't enjoy. Yeah, it, it, their worst match was still good. Right, and even matches where it was just one on one, even like Roman Reigns matches, yeah. those were good. These guys have just looked great. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I really don't have any complaints about the the way they've used the Shield. No, I'm I hope I, I even like how they're doing the breakup too. I right. think that's really I think good that too. Now we might get to see a little more character development, which is great. Yep. But these guys. You can put them on any card and anywhere on the card, and people are totally okay with it. Yep. They accept them as main eventers. They accept them as curtain jerkers. They're just awesome. Yep, and I still love the fact they still come through the uh, the crowd. That's a nice little touch. Yeah. Um, honorable mention would probably be the Bullet Club from New Japan because you yes. know they're real. And of course the Wyatts. Wyatts are good. Were great, but uh, 
really didn't do much this year to stay. It was, it was mostly Wyatt. Yeah. It was Bray, and we didn't see a lot from the other two. Yeah. So. But uh, Luke Harper's good, though. I like Bray. And uh, Eric, Eric Rowan has improved. He fits bit. his role. Yeah. He's proven, though. Uh, tag Team of the Year. Is there any question who it's going to be? Ready? Young Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be. Who I mean, else could it be? It's the young, man, they're so over. They're rock stars, man. <laughs> they are the greatest tag team in the world. I mean, PWG Tag Team Champions this year. IWGP Junior Tag Team Champions this year. Dragon Gate opened the, opened the United Gate Tag Team Champions this year. There were in S attraction matches in ROH. Oh, and um, tag some Chicago. of the best ma matches on those cards. Yep. Chikara. Chikara and Kakunota's Day Parejas champion. I think C4. No. They didn't. So yeah, they were champions in four different companies this year, I think, and that's just what I know of. They're always having the best matches, just amazing. They went over to Japan, and it's great because if you watch their matches in Japan, you can tell that the, the audience isn't really familiar with them, Yeah. and they're quiet, but by the end of the match, those guys are over. <laughs> yeah. It's just crazy. But like, watch Wrestle Kingdom from a... From 2014. Yeah, this year. Just slow. It, it's crazy. I love the Bucks, man. The Bucks are so awesome. Uh, any honorable mentions this year? I don't think anybody really okay, well, is on there. Um, if the Shield was a good, was a good one. Um, rock, with any combination of the two. Uh, the Rhodes, uh, Goldust and, Co and Goldust and Cody were good. Mm -hmm. um, Bad Influence was pretty good. And TNA. Yeah, they were. You know, they they fell off a little bit yeah. this year. Um, I also really liked uh, Red Dragon. You know, they were really good. Yeah, they're they're a lot. And the American good. Wolves too. Gotta give them a shout out to those guys. Of course. Okay, promotion of the year. Uh, only competition which was between New Japan and Peter G basically, and uh, seems like that was what it was last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I gotta give it to New Japan, man. They made me a fan this year. I mean, show after show after show, just amazing matches and just incredible. Just the production of this company is amazing. They they understand the little things of wrestling that make everything feel better. Mm -hmm. And I love that so much as a wrestling fan, and I just appreciate what they're doing. But for God's sakes, get English commentary, please. I'm begging you. That's all I want. I want to know the storylines. <laughs> <laughs> right. I have to agree. New Japan, they, they do just, like you said, everything so well. And they understand that wrestling is meant to be... People, you're meant to believe it's real fight. That's what yeah. the, the job of the wrestlers in the ring is to make the people watching believe that this is real. And that is exactly what New Japan is all about. They I make every little thing count. And they it, it, it's not insulting. I, I haven't felt insulted by one. Yeah. There is one thing I love that they do. It's such a little thing, but it's such a big thing. For every IWGP championship match, they have a video package showing every champion. That is just such a little thing, but it just makes me feel like I am watching something prestigious about to be defended. Mm -hmm. And it's such a genius idea. It's like something I love, and I wish more companies did that. It's just, right. again, little things mean, can mean so much. And they don't rush things, you know? No, they take like, their time. The unification match with Cena and Orton, that's a WrestleMania main event. Oh, that's no money. You they put that out in a month, Yeah, you know? New Japan, they take their time. They know exactly what they're doing. They had they had Tanahashi and Okada, and they only had to wrestle uh, four times this year. You know, and if WWE, they'd have had them on every fucking pay per view wrestling each other. Mm -hmm. Three months, it's over. Yep. Nope. Oh, uh, New Japan, they stretched it. They did it for Wrestle Kingdom, Invasion Attack, and King of Pro Wrestling, the three biggest shows of the year, and they made some money off of that. Mm. Smart. And. I don't want to forget to, to mention PWG. This is a company that hasn't had a bad match in the two years that we've been on on YouTube. Yeah. They have had yet to have a bad show. I agree. I, I've been a fan of them since... Uh, I've started watching every single show since Steam Wolf back in 2011, and I have yet to see a show I'm like, I regretted buying that. I loved every single match. I, loved, I, I just love this company so much. And really... It was a hard pick for me, but what put it over the edge was the G1 Climax tournament. Oh my god. We're talking about guys going out for nine, it was nine days, I believe it was nine, nine days tournament. Nine days of wrestling, yeah, hard wrestling, yeah. Consecutive. Well, no, they're not like right now, it's like a few days apart. Okay, well, we're talking about a large amount of shows in a very short amount of time. Yeah. We're and a tournament where these guys just went out and beat the living hell out of each other from day one. Yeah. You know, 
usually when you see tournaments like this, we're, you're saving the best for last. Yeah, day one's usually bad, and then day two's better, and then day three, they, you know, you blew everything away. By day four, your mind was just exploding yeah. during this tournament. And then day nine was amazing. So, so I, that's what put it over the edge for me. Okay. Uh, but again, PWG. Great. Love them. Both of them are great. Booking, yep. awesome. All right, the most outstanding wrestler of the year. I think we're going to have a lot of honorable mention for this one, but uh, let's stick with the. I'll go. Want me to go first? Sure. All right, for me, this ha I had a tough time picking between Okada or Tanahashi, but at the end of the day, I had to go with Hiroshi Tanahashi because this is a guy who I felt like if he was on the first match of the card, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever, main event, whatever, he was always on par with a, just he's always on his A game. He had probably one of the best matches of the night every single time he was on a card. And he just really was amazing. Um, so many matches. I mean his match with Okada, match with Carl Anderson he had, his matches in the G1 were amazing, including the one against uh, Kojima was great, Ish Ishii, Devitt, Shibata, so many great matches. And just for me, he had had probably the mo just a significant year where he was, you know, he's like 30-something, 30 36, yeah, is it? 30, yeah, he's yeah. in his 30s. And he's, you know, going out there every every night and kicking ass and just being a star. And, uh, you know, can't take that away from him, you know. But Okada's great, too, but just Tanahashi was just almost on a whole other level at some times. I mean, that's hard to argue with. Yeah. But Tanahashi is definitely right up there with the best wrestlers in the world. Yeah. For me, I went with Daniel Bryan. Uh, this is a guy that... He did get the world title this year, but it was very short-lived. And this is a guy that was thrown into a lot of situations. Um, we're talking about 20-minute main events on Raw. Yeah. Consistently, when I can't remember the last time where a guy was the guy, like, here, go have a 20-minute match to finish Raw. Yeah. Very rarely was that something that they did. Yeah, that, that, uh, that you're talking about that gauntlet match with uh, Mims and Jack Well, Harris. I mean, there's that, there's the... The six man tags. Yeah. There's, there's just a, you know, there's a lot of matches where they gave him time yeah. where most time in years past you wouldn't see yeah. that. But like that, that, like that beat the gauntlet. I think was like a great example because like he he wrestled Swagger in an okay match and he had some matches with Cesaro, which was amazing match. Mm -hmm. And it was like it was a gauntlet match. And like when was the last time you saw a gauntlet match that was that that entertaining? Right. So and I mean, good how many gauntlets has he been in? How many three on ones has he been in? And how many times has he carried someone who wasn't quite as good? I mean, look at uh, Rowan. Look at Ryback. These are guys that he carried to pretty good matches, you know? So, it, it, for me, it's got to be Daniel Bryan. Okay. Um, wrestler of the Year. Would you like to go first? Uh, I'll take over All first. All right, go one. for it. For me, it's got to be Okada. Uh, this is a guy that I mentioned before. He became the face of New Japan, the best company in the world, from our point of view. I agree. And he, like I said, he's believable. You believe he is the best. He is their champion. He's the best. He's the top of the mountain. I agree. In New Japan. I, I, have, I have said that this guy is like the next Masawa or Kobashi in the making. Like, he is 26 years old. And he's already this good. Mm -hmm. Like he's got another ten years ahead of him. And he's a guy that won the title early in the year, has held it for most well throughout the whole year, main evented all year, and had awesome matches the whole time. Yep. I have to give it to him. Uh, it's his to own a promotion the way he does. You know. Yep. It's just it's amazing to watch for a guy that young. He is he is the rainmaker man. He makes it rain. That's right. All right. I debated for very, very long about who I was going to get it. It was going to be Okada or it was going to be this guy, Daniel Bryan, my wrestler of the year. Here's my reason. Everything he basically said, like, he went out there and he was the headliner of Raw night after night after night after night. He was the guy that, like, you went out, like, you need, some, you need something to close with Raw? Send out the dragon. Mm -hmm. Okay? But for me, it's also, he made the crowd care about him. Like, he was put, he was, beginning this year, he was a tag team with Kane. It was a good tag team. But he wasn't really, the, he wasn't anything special. But as the year got on, the crowd got more and more behind him. More and more. Until eventually, that crowd was in the palm of his hand every single time he went out there. And for me, that's what makes you the best wrestler in the world. When you have that crowd in the palm of your hand 
every single time you step out in that ring, and he had that in spade. He had some of the best matches of the year. He carried guys to some great matches. He had a phenomenal match with John Cena. He, and he had, he, he had some good matches with Randy Orton even too he, on other shows. Not after SummerSlam though. And for me, Dana Bryan is a guy who in, is just a guy who's a workhorse. He went out there every night. He had the best match no matter where he was. That's why he's my rest of the year. Just because he worked for it. And I want to point out a perfect example of why that that's a good pick is when John Cena and Randy Orton were doing their uh, championship championship extension uh, kind of whatever. Yeah. So basically, the the Raw before the TLC pay per view where they had a bunch of the older champions. They had they had like Mark Henry, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, CM Punk. All these big names. Who's the one they're chanting for? And the crowd is going just mental for Daniel Bryan the whole time, even when yes. he's not mentioned. No, nope. it has the, the the segment has nothing to do with him. And Triple H has to take time to stop and okay, we'll just let them burn themselves out. <laughs> it didn't work. It, they're they're chanting for like a full minute. Yeah, and they kept going and yep. kept going and kept going, and that to me proves that this is a guy that has gotten so over that it doesn't matter what you do. Yep. You can, D WWE, Daniel Bryan ain't going away. He's here to stay. He is over as hell, and we are not going to let you put him, sweep him underneath the rug, and he is my rest of the year, no question. And we also got some last-minute awards, which uh, let's, start with the, let's start with the bad one with some good. Okay. Um, basically, how would you phrase this award? Uh, the fuck you going forward? Yeah, okay, the fuck you going for award <laughs> goes to TNA for me, because TNA, I, I, I can't defend you. I, I, I can't take anyone seriously that defends you, even. Like, this year has been an embarrassment for you. Remember August 1st, the Tito Ortiz thing? Remember that shit? Remember making AJ sting and then having it just, you know, kind of like just, oh, okay, you know, he's faced again, you know? Ace and eight for the whole fucking year. Ah, just Brooke Hogan, Heel Dixie, just fuck you going forward. I fucking hate you. I want you to die so someone else can take your spot. Okay? I'm fucking done with you. See, I want I wanted to go with TNA, but I'm going to go a little more specific, and I'm going to go with Dixie Carter. <laughs> okay, now, you're better. <laughs> Dixie Carter had one hell of a bunker year this year because... First of all, she broke her word when she said she would never be an on-air personality. Yeah. So well, she broke that a long time ago. Right. But now she's a, she's a heel. Yeah. But before she's, that, she's the heel in the company. The best the best thing was <clears throat> Dixie's ego so big that they act, she actually had a Dixie. action figure made out for her, and then they did a little Twitter game where. You take a picture of your Dixie doll and you post where you're at. I, I would put in the fucking toilet where I would put it. Shit. The thing is, this didn't do. Nobody fucking did it. Of course, they're not Nobody's gonna buy gonna it. Do that. And then the heel turn. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible oh, stuff. Well, don't forget also the ask Dixie thing on Twitter. Exactly. That one. Yeah. Like where basically it was about the fans basically mocking you on open format, and you never replied to any of the questions. Right. I, it's a, it's amazing to me. That, how someone can be so delusional mm -hmm. to think that she's real. Is she? I think she believes she's a respected she, member of the. I, I think she likes to think of herself as like the Stephanie McMahon, which you know we give we give Stephanie a lot of shit, but I still like appreciate. At Stephanie. least she's got some respect. Yeah, out there. I respect Stephanie. I, I think she's done a lot for this business, and she knows what she's doing a lot of the times. Dixie, you ain't Stephanie. You are, you're a fucking idiot. Is what you are. Just completely clueless. So. To Dixie Carter and to TNA, fuck you going forward. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep, we're, we're keeping that one next year. <laughs> I like that one. Okay, and what was the other one? Uh, the the ne What to watch for. What to watch for, okay. Um, for me, obviously, like New Japan, P2G, ROH, I, I still love ROH, you know, even though some people don't really like them. And, you know, basically all the companies I, really, I watch right now, watch those companies, they're good. But the one that I have to get the biggest shout out to, which I never ever hear anyone talking about, except for a few guys on Twitter, AAW. This company is fucking good. 
They have so many great wrestlers. They are really busting their ass to deliver amazing shows month after month. Support these guys. They're on SmartMark Video. They have uh, on demand, video on demand shows. They're $10. Watch them. I'm begging you. I want you to support this company. I love what they're doing. They are doing wrestling very, very well. They are like the old school ROH where it's just really solid shows with a few storylines mixed in and just I cannot put into words enough how much I want these guys to be successful. Please go and support these guys. I'm begging you. Uh, you know, I wanted to pick the same one, but just to vary things up a little yeah. bit, I'm going to go with independent wrestling. And <laughs> okay. I know that's very broad, but I want, hear me out because we're talking about we got AJ Styles on the independent scene. We're a, we got Hero on the independent scene. And you go on to these guys' websites and you look at all the dates that they have. These are so many different promotions. Yeah. And you, if you look at these, all these different promotions, the indie scene has changed so much over the past few years that they have moved away from nostalgia, old wrestlers, 80s wrestlers having terrible matches just for the sake of drawing crowds yeah. to have an exciting young, fast-paced matches with great yeah. wrestlers, and I think that we are about to see a big push yeah. in the indie scene because how many more wrestlers can WWE take in, honestly? Mm -hmm. So I say watch for indie wrestling, watch for your local indie, yeah. and... The, 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 yeah, there's so many names, like, okay, I'll even throw out Evolve, it had a really good show last night. Dragon USA, watch them. CCW is actually picking shit up and like actually yep. doing some good stuff now. AIW. AIW, they're great. They're in Cleveland, Ohio. They're really good. They got like they got a lot of the guys that AEW had. They're, they booked uh, Elgin versus Drake Younger very soon, which is gonna be awesome. Beyond Wrestling, very good company. I hear a lot about PWX. I hear a lot about them. Uh, Dreamwave Wrestling out mm -hmm. in about by Chicago. Smash? Is there a Smash? Uh, or a smash, flash? whatever. Smash Clash Wrestling over here in Michigan. We don't really go to them very much because. They don't have that very good of shows, but whatever. Go support some indie wrestling, folks. Give them your money. Don't give McMahon your money when they ain't doing shit you want them to do. Here's my. Here's the way I see it. Support the guys now that you want to see on your TV for free later. Like me, I supported Brian. Now he's on my television. If you like a guy, buy his shirts, buy his yep. DVDs, show yep. up to his shows because that's the guy that's going to get signed. Go to, go to ProWrestlingTees.com and there's a lot of wrestlers out there who try to sell their shirt. Support your indie wrestlers, man. They deserve your money. They work hard for it, man. And, and we fully, fully endorse every independent wrestler out there getting paid and getting and money. busting their ass to, to make their dream come true. Yeah, and working hard for us, man, to give us some entertainment. Because oh, yeah. God knows those guys up north ain't doing it for us. Well, All right. I think that covers that it. That covers it, folks. That's only video one, and there's a lot more coming. Thank you very much for joining us. Take care. Bye.